Imagine for a minute a newborn child that has just been brought into this world. What's the first thing that comes to mind for you? For me, it's the radiance of their eyes, just being enamored by their eyes, the connection to their soul. And I believe that children's eyes are so radiant because that's their connection to source. I believe the radiance is just a reflection of how connected they are to God. They just came from there. And I think that's beautiful. But unfortunately, over time, that radiance tends to fade. It tends to fade out of that child's eyes as they go through the experiences of life. It's like these lenses get put over the eyes and those lenses might be considered perception because it also alters the way they see the world. And so that connection with source fades and the radiance in the eyes begins to fade. And I know this happened to me. I went through college and I was very interested in real estate. So I studied real estate and got involved in real estate and, and had a quite a few different careers in real estate. But one time stands out in particular with me and that was about four years ago. I set this goal that I wanted to make a million dollars in a year. So I don't know about you, but I feel like success, which we're trained by the matrix, by some of the programming that goes on, success is supposed to mean um, having money. I know that we all are, we all are familiar with the cliche that money doesn't buy happiness. However, I think the majority of people that are chasing success are chasing money. And I was one of them, so no judgment. And I went after it. I did what I needed to do to hit that goal to make a million dollars in a year. I hired a mentor. I did everything that mentor said. I made a bunch of phone calls. I hired a team. And I just remember feeling like the decision to make it happen was enacted. So I, I had decided that I was going to do it. But I remember feeling like I was forcing it. I, I felt like I was pushing water, literally, like pushing water up a hill. And the reason I know that and why it stands out is when I would leave or I would take three days to go on a, a weekend vacation or something, or maybe a little bit longer, everything would, would flow backwards. Like it was almost like it started over again. So I was using what I call force and it was unsustainable. But I pushed through, I pushed through and I hit the goal. I hit the goal in 2018. I made $1.1 million in real estate. And so why am I telling you this? Well, have you ever worked so hard for a goal and then attained that goal like I did and looked around and realized, I'm not happy. That's what happened to me. I looked around and I, I realized this, this is not this is not what I want. I'm not happy. And I had forced my way and I'm like, I cannot sustain this. I don't want to, I don't want to push this much being out of flow. I mean, I could, I could basically not listen to my, to my heart and just push forward. But I knew I didn't want to. And I remember it like it was yesterday. I looked into the mirror and I said to myself, I don't want to do this anymore. And Part of me felt that guilt or shame, you know, like the matrix was, the matrix thinking was telling me, you know, that you, oh, you've got to push forward. This is what we do. This is how the world works. This is life's tough, blah, blah, blah. And so that's when I realized that I had fell victim to what I call matrix thinking. So what is the matrix? Well, the matrix, I think, is much more understood given the world events that have occurred in the uh, last year or so. But the matrix is, it's a system set up by the elite for the elite. It's a system where there's a lot of corruption. It's a system where the focus is to disempower the individual. And that corruption runs deep. That corruption's in our monetary systems. It's in our corporate systems, our corporate structures. It's in our governments. But more importantly than that macro view, 
even though all those things are true, more importantly is how that affects the individual, how that extracts the personal sovereignty and power out of the individual. And that's illustrated really well by the fact that 80% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. Americans are working harder than ever. And, and worldwide, I think this is, is fairly, fairly true worldwide. People are working so hard just to make ends meet. And they have no time to pursue their passion and to give back to the world in a meaningful way, which I'd like to talk a little bit more about. So how do we get out of that matrix? How do we, how do we extract ourselves from that matrix? Because I know I felt I was stuck. And it was in that moment when I looked in the mirror that I decided that I was going to escape the matrix. So I want to provide you with a map to escape the matrix. And I believe it begins with taking the inner journey. So let me explain. Have you ever had that little voice? Some of us will call it intuition. I like to call it the clarion call. It's like this call out that tells you, hey, this isn't the right path for you. Or hey, this isn't what you're supposed to be doing. Or this, this scenario isn't correct for you. I know we've all heard it. It comes from our hearts. And oftentimes, unfortunately, in the way that this matrix is set up, we don't get a chance to follow it because we're afraid. We're, we're instilled with fear, beliefs, limiting beliefs, these perceptions that block the radiance of our eyes and disconnect us from sourcefulness or true resourcefulness from source within. And we have this fear that we have to fit in and we have to act externally rather than internally to fit in with society. And that's unfortunate because that clarion call, I believe, is your intuition or God showing you the pathway to what I call your soul song. That life that you came here to live. That highest timeline of a life of fulfillment, effortless flow, most times, effort is needed, but a flow state where you can be truly fulfilled. And I believe that's how we're intended to live. But unfortunately, we're not. Most of us are not. And I believe it's deeply instilled in our beliefs, in our, our systems, our, the, all these paradigms that we live in, uh, most of which have been spoon-fed from our grandparents to our parents to us and accepted without being challenged. As a matter of fact, we're almost ostracized if we try to step out of the matrix. But I'm telling you, that is where true fulfillment is. And one of the, one of the ways that, that I like to look at this, or one of the things I think that causes us the most trouble, is the way that we set our goals. So I set this goal, an external goal, of making a million dollars in a year. And we can all relate. We've, we've had goals of maybe to get a car, or to get a relationship, or to get a house. And all of those things, notice, are external. So we set our goal as a destination, and we even have an acronym, SMART goals, measurable, attainable, all of those things. But they're always external. The way we set goals is always an external destination. And the problem with that is that we can guarantee, almost guarantee that you can get there. So that's, that's the good part is you can almost guarantee, like if you hire, I'm a mentor and a coach, and if someone hires me to make X amount of money in real estate, I can show them a way to get there. And if they follow what I say, I can pretty close to guarantee that if they do what I say, that they can reach that goal. So that's the good part. But what I can't guarantee, and the problem in lies in the fact that when they do get there, there's no guarantee that they'll be happy just like in my case. And so we're foregoing our happiness for these external goals. I call it the corporate hamster. It's just like the more you go, you feel like you're gaining. But what happens? What If I would have stayed on that hamster wheel, what would have happened to me next? I would have set a goal for $2 million, right? So it's like, when is it ever enough? And we get trapped in that matrix style of thinking. So I want to flip goal setting on its head. Flip it completely upside down. And instead of focusing on where you're going, focus on where you're coming from. Purify 
your intention and where you're coming from. And this changes everything. First of all, if you do that, if you purify where you're coming from and you take that inner journey, you listen to that clarion call and you follow your soul song, then I can't guarantee you where you're going to end up. As a matter of fact, you really, there's no way to know. And that's the beautiful part. I know that scares a lot of people, but Source literally lays down each flagstone for you as you just go through this journey of life that is beautiful. So I can't guarantee where you're going to end up, but what I can guarantee is that you will be fulfilled and that you will be happy not only when you arrive, but more importantly, on the destination. So the whole system of goal setting to me is backwards. And I think that's why when I reached my goal, I wasn't happy. And I hope that people will understand the importance of taking that inner journey. Another way to illustrate this is, reminds me of a great book called Power Versus Force by Dr. David Hawkins. I don't know if you've read this book, but it is, it's a phenomenal read. And he talks about forcing, like I was, pushing water up a hill and versus standing in a place of power. And we're not talking about patriarchal power like corporations have. We're talking about being resourceful, reconnecting to source within through that inner journey and having that flow through you. And a great way to illustrate this is what I call a merry-go-round analogy. So do you remember the merry-go-round back in grade school? So imagine you're in third grade, the bell goes off and you're running out to, to the merry-go-round. So you've got maybe three or four friends with you and you start running really fast along the side. You get it going really fast and then you hop on. But remember how it felt when you got into the center of the merry-go-round? You could put your arms up. You didn't even have to hold on. And the entire world would spin around you. That is what I mean by being centered, by following your soul song, and stepping into pure, authentic alignment. So what happens? when you get a little bit out of that center of the wheel. We'll call this the wheel of life, the sansara wheel of life. When you get a little bit out of center, you start to feel that resistance in your life. Maybe you're feeling this now, like, oh, I don't really like my job, but I've gotta do it. Oh, it's not that bad. Let's just try to be positive. Maybe you get two or three feet out of center. Well, now you're holding on with both hands. And this is where things like addiction and depression and other problems really start to level up because you're not in alignment with yourself. You're not in alignment with who you really are. And what happens next? Well, your legs may flail out to the side and you get thrown off. And we've been there. We've been thrown off. So by being in the center of that merry-go-round in your life, being in alignment with who you are, by taking that inner journey and reconnecting to source, bringing that radiance back in your eyes, you can start to flow abundance through you. You're a conduit for source. So what does that mean? That means that as abundance comes into you, you become a shepherd for the abundance and you let it flow through you, which is the opposite of the old way, the forceful way, which I call ego. So ego has its opposite in humility, allowing things to flow. So the best definition I've heard for humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking about yourself less. And when you've become in that alignment and you begin to experience abundance in more ways than just money, you experience abundance in health, in relationships, in all these different facets, these different pillars of your life then it's super important to maintain that humility versus ego. And let me explain why. Let's look for a minute at the man who has the ego. And first of all, he's going to be using force to attain his wealth because coming from an ego state, it's service to self. And he's going to be using force. He's going to be using a tremendous amount of energy, most likely is going to be um, very low on energy in all reality and forcing his way through life but he comes from a place of scarcity. It's from a place of fear. 
So maybe he has this big building and he tints his windows, puts his name on top, and everything is about service to self. He doesn't want to share. He doesn't want to help others, but he maybe has the illusion that he's helping others. Versus the man that is centered and has humility. When source flows through him, when abundance flows through him, instead of holding on to it, he believes in abundance, not scarcity. He believes in love, not fear. And he allows that to flow through him. He allows that to come out and each one teach one. And it's a butterfly effect that begins to change the world. When we choose to have that integrity and be authentic and be in alignment and let that flow through us. And it is one of the most beautiful feelings that you can have. You don't have to go through life scared in the matrix and fearful. So let's take a second right now and ask yourself this question. Am I living my soul song? Have I heard that clarion call and ignored it? Well, the good news is it's never too late. And if you take that baby from the beginning of our story, and let's say that baby's you, now you've gone through your entire life and you're sitting there on your deathbed, laying on your deathbed. What's going to be important to you? Is it going to be important that you lived your life according to society, according to the matrix, and you fed in and you had to live by force your whole life? Or is it important to you that you had the courage to listen to your clarion call, to step in and live your soul song, your highest timeline, and to have a butterfly effect to help the rest of the world. Because I can promise you one thing, everything you ever wanted in your life, whether that's abundance, joy, happiness, love, doesn't come from external, it comes from within. Thank you.